Hey, so I want to introduce you guys to a, a pretty cool feature of the split data pill in Azure Machine Learning Studio. So let's take this classic example. We've been through this many times before if you've been following this book. Uh, but this is a bike buyer's data. We're trying to predict uh, whether or not someone will purchase a bike. And we have these fields like marital status, gender, income, number of children, commute distance, number of cars, age, and then, of course, uh, a few others and whether or not they purchased a bike. So two possible outcomes of a categorical value. So we're running a two-class uh, base point machine, two-class because there's only two values, classification model because the dependent variable is categorical and not numeric. So here in our traditional model, uh, let me move this up here a bit. We've got our split train score evaluate. And let's just take a look at the evaluation here. So again, we're predicting whether or not they'll purchase a bike. Our accuracy rate is about 64.7% accurate. Okay, so that's decent for a two-class model. Should be at least above 50%, right? If it does any good at all, since there's only two possible values. Anyway, uh, let's. what I want to know more in more detail, though, is which of the factors of the independent variables are having the largest effect. So because a Bayes model doesn't give me those coefficients here in Azure ML Studio, I just realized I'm going to need to change that to something different. So let's go back to just a regular baseline um, two-class logistic regression. That'll do it for us. Give us some coefficients. Let me run that. I'll pause this. Okay, let's take a look at our evaluation results here with the logistic regression. Um, pretty close. Ah, actually, exactly the same, at least for accuracy. I think some of these are a little bit different. 64.7%, but let's take a look here at our regression coefficients. Okay, commute distance. If they drive, uh, if, if they have to commute 10 plus miles to work, they're much less likely to buy a, a bike. The more cars they have, the less likely they are to buy a bike. So let's uh, let's find something, I don't know. How about, here we go, region Pacific. If they live in the Pacific, they're more likely to buy a bike. The other regions uh, don't have as big of an influence. Here in North America, somewhat less likely. Uh, Europe, that doesn't make a difference at all. Now let's go back to cars. This is our most important one. What I wanna do, let's start by breaking this model up into those who have a lot of cars and those who have a little. In other words, maybe, Maybe there's not a perfectly linear relationship between cars and likelihood to purchase bike. Maybe if they just have one car, they're still, um, you know, as, as they move from zero cars to one car, maybe there's no effect on whether or not they purchase a bike. Maybe it's when they move from one car to two or two cars to three where that effect truly starts to happen. So what we can do is some compound modeling or a, a way of dividing up our data set and analyzing a model um, different models for different potential values. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to delete, uh, actually, I think I'm going to delete all of these, including, uh, no. Yeah, I'm going to delete all of these, including this split data. Well, I'll keep that split data. I'll hold on to this guy for now. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to change this split to a different type. Rather than use this as a split rows into a training set and uh, um, a testing set, we're going to use regular and relative expressions to tell it to split this data set into two halves that we'll an analyze separately. So let me show you the details for what regular expression means here. I'm going to go to the Microsoft um, uh, documentation. So we can split data using relative or regular expressions. A relative expression, expression is for numeric data, uh, like number of cars. So for example, let's say we want to analyze a model where age is greater than 40 versus younger than 40. Um, or like in our case, where cars is greater than one or equal to or less than one. So here's how it works. They give us some examples here. Um, here's uh, using calendar year. We can use this expression to return only those where year is above 2010. Uh, let's look at some others here. Here's where a uh, column with an index of zero. So for the first column, is less than or equal to 30 and not equal to 20. Um, time elapsed. Uh, let's let's try one of these. Let's use instead. I don't like using column index. Let's use cars is greater than or 
well, let's just say greater than one, because I want to put one and zero in one group and greater than one in another group, and let's see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to come back here and say using a relative expression, we want to look at cars, and I, honestly, I can't remember if uh, capitalization matters. Well, we'll find out. And then the format for that is simply saying uh, less than or equal to 30. Okay, perfect. So let's come back here. Oh, I'm on regular. Sorry, I changed that to relative. Here we go. Cars greater than, let's say, 1. Or we could say greater than or equal to 2. So this side is going to be those that are true. This side is going to be those that are false. Rather than do another split train score evaluate, let's make it a bit simpler and use the cross-validate model pill. That kind of does a lot of those things in once in one for us. So I'm still going to use my two-class logistic regression. And then uh, let's copy this. Paste. Get that out of the way. And let's run the other one into this side. And we can use two-class logistic regression regression for both of those. Let's be sure to specify what the dependent variable is here. That's what it's wondering about. That's why the red exclamation point is there. Purchase bike for that one. Purchase bike for this one. Perfect. Okay, let's run all of this and see what we get. So again, if I hover over this, result set 2, this is going to be where uh, that evaluation is false, and this is where it's true. So on the left side is going to be those where it is greater than 1, so more than 1, and this is going to be the side where there's only 0 or 1 car. So let's pause that real quick. All right, here we go. So let's see what differences we have here. This is for those whose cars are... Oops. I, I didn't want scored results, I wanted the evaluation results. There we go. So if you don't remember from a prior video, the way this works um, with cross uh, validation, it divides the data up into 10 random samples and uh, evaluates separately for each sample, but then it also scores for all of the um, all the records. Anyway, our average here is an accuracy of 64%. Uh, 64.1%. So it was a little bit tougher predict to predict because remember before the overall average, the overall 70% um, split data sample we did was 64.7%. Um, here's all of our other criteria. I'm just going to focus on accuracy for now. All right, let's take a look at it for those who have zero or one car. All right, accuracy right here. Average goes down. So it's tougher to predict for those who have zero or one car, probably because we're not sure uh, why it is they're purchasing a bike. So I'm going to try one more um, split just to see if we can get anything better out of this. So uh, let's change it from uh, zero cars to any cars, and let's see what that gets us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this and pause it. Okay, this one did a lot better. Let's check this one out. So. First of all, this is the uh, evaluation for those who uh, have purchased, at least, who have at least one or more cars. So on this one, accuracy is about 63.2, so a little bit lower than what our overall was when we included bike simply as an independent variable. So now uh, let's uh, show you this one. Accuracy, 70%, 70.4. So it's, we, we can do a much better job explaining things if we uh, analyze those with no cars versus those with at least one or more cars. And using this split data allows us to make that differentiation. Now we can even take it further. Let's say we want to even better explain um, those with uh, one or more cars. Let's grab another split data. Let's pull this down here. Actually, I'm going to move that back up, give myself some more room. Okay, so let's take this one into our split. There we go. So I'm going to keep track of what that uh, evaluation is right there. But now what I want to do is say let's split with a regular expression, and let's pick a variable that's categorical. So, for example, um, let's come back here. Uh, I'm trying to remember uh, which, oh, I'm trying to remember which, which is the categorical. 
Well, let's just do uh, let's do gender. So um, what I'm going to do is say let's divide up into male, female, and see if we get any better results or more accurate results that way. So come here and take a look at the documentation. So let's go to split data using a regular expression. So this is when the data is what we use when the data is categorical. So this says uh, this is the field name, and this is the text you're looking for. You can say uh, any uh, record that includes this keyword in that field, this is how you would how you would select for those. Right here. Here it says this is an example of looking for a specified string in any position uh, within the second column of the data set. So because it's using column index instead of column name. So it's saying in column two because it's zero based uh, numbering the columns there. Uh, spe specified string in any position of the second column. So this must mean any position of the column, and then this is the string right here. Um, this one's interesting. Uh, here's string match on IP address. This says the field is field name is called IP address, and then uh, let's see. And then it says divide some server log data into two categories. Connections. All right, regular expression is applied to IP address as a string type. So uh, the first output contains all addresses that begin with ten. There we go. So this means anything that begins with 10. OK, well, what I want um, is going to be very simple. I'm just going to come here and say where gender is female. So let's go ahead and run that. Make sure it works. Run selected. I guess I could pause it, but it should only take a second. Uh, these are all cached, so don't be redone. It's just this guy right here. All right, perfect. Let's double check. So this should be the data if it's true, and this is the data if it's false. Let's take a look at, visualize the data on the true side. Good. So here, everything on the true side, these are all just females. Perfect. That's what I wanted. So let's go ahead and grab some cross-validate models. Paste, paste, and let's reanalyze everything for females and for males. We'll just keep sticking with our logistic regression. So I'll pull that one down to here and down to here. OK, let's go ahead and run these. I'll pause that while it's running. OK, so because we came off this side of the split data, again, one thing I want to remind you is that it should only be those who have one or more cars. So this is the, oh, you know what? Look what I did wrong. This is not supposed to come from there. It's supposed to come from this side. Let me rerun this one real quick. So from this side, uh, this split data is our expression looking for only those that contain the word females. So that means the true should be, these should be the females, these should be the males. Let's check this side and make sure that this is only males with one or more cars. Oh no, sorry, it's coming off the fault side of this split data. So the one or more cars is that side, this side is the zero cars. The one that's actually easier, uh, we can explain more accurately. All right, so let's take a look at it now. Um, Evaluation results, visualize accuracy for our 10 different folds. Overall accuracy, it's actually a little bit tougher to explain for, is it males? Is that what we have? Yeah, that was this side. Tougher to explain for males. Let's see about females. Oh, it's not scored results. We wanted evaluation results by fold. OK, so it's also a little tougher to explain. So in this case, it's actually better to keep gender as a uh, as a variable rather than split the data set up across uh, male and female. It's not worth the trade-off. So we're, the extra variance explained is not worth the uh, um, the variance uh, at the, the additional variance. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's pick another one rather than gender. If I remember right, um, commute distance that was one that made a big difference. Those with with longer commute distance were um, tougher to, or were more likely to buy a bike. Oh, no, no, sorry, less likely to buy a bike. That's what it was. So let's go ahead and change this one right here to commute distance. And by the way, this is all case sensitive, I've learned. And I'm just going to put the number 10 here because that'll give me both those who are 10 plus miles and those who are 5 to 10. So look for the number 10 anywhere in uh, commute distance and should return that. 
So let's go ahead and run that guy. By the way, while this is running, let me show something to you. I learned the hard way here as I've been trying to make this work. Uh, there's this great quick reference guide here for all the different regular expression characters and options. So uh, escape characters, what does this mean? Uh, character classes for grouping. Um, uh, the brackets are useful. This is like first, like A through Z, give me anything that starts with either of those, any of those letters. A um, bunch of useful ones. Uh, anyway, you can scroll through these and figure out what all of them mean if you want to do something more complicated. But I'm going to keep it simple. Come back here. This should be those who have the number 10 anywhere in commute distance. Sure enough, 10 plus, 5 to 10, perfect. And those that don't, let's go ahead and run these cross validate models. I'll pause it. All right, let's take a look. So these are those who are, uh, let's go back here, um, zero cars and five to 10 mile commute distance. Let's see how good we are explaining that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Accuracy, perfect. That means that um, everybody that we have that meets those criteria must have done the same thing, which is not by a bike, I'm guessing. Let's take a look at that data and see. So uh, cars, zero. Purchase bike, no. Oh, no, here is one. We were able to predict these yeses some other way. But uh, that this is a case of where we probably overfit this model a little too much. I think we don't have enough. In fact, how many, um, how many results were in that data set? Only 10 rows. Yeah, that's not enough data to really be reliable. Um, but we were able to accurately predict. Well, no, look, here's one that was wrong. I wonder how it thinks the accuracy was perfect on that. Anyway, let's take a look at this one over here. Okay, here we go. Accuracy, I think it's barely a fraction higher than the other one. The other one was 70 point, I think two or three or something like that. Anyway, so um, some people refer to this as compound modeling where we split the data up in, into different groups and come up with a predictive model for each separate group. Because uh, uh, sometimes that can be more accurate than uh, one model that includes everything as independent variables. But to accomplish that, we use relative and regular expressions using the split data pill. That is an extremely useful feature. All right, that's it.